Hello, I am going to talk to you about the problems that happen immediately after placing in a catheter in a male. Uh, when I say immediate, it means that those problems which come usually within a matter of few hours, one to two hours after putting in a catheter. And what problems? Firstly, the patient can experience uh, bladder spasms which will result in leakage of variable amount of urine from external urinary meters by the side of the catheter. That's one thing that can happen. Second, the urine which is draining out from the catheter and coming in the bag can get blood tinged and there can be various degrees of this hematuria. And thirdly, there can be a bleeding by the side of catheter coming out of urinary meatus, not in the lumen of the bag, but from the external urinary meatus. And then, patient can develop fever with chills. So these are four commonly happening problems immediately after placing a catheter. And let me elaborate them one by one. Uh, first of all, this common problem that the patient feels a sudden onset desire to urinate and you know he has been recently catheterized but then suddenly he gets a desire to pass urine and then he experiences an spasmodic pain in lower abdomen and he notices that some drops of urine are leaking by the side of catheter. Now what will the patient infer? The patient will infer that Prior to putting in the catheter, I was having a desire to void and I was not able to void. Now I have a catheter, still there is a desire to void and I am not able to void. So patients infer that the catheter is blocked or catheter is malfunctioning. But truly, this is not catheter blockage, this is what we call catheter bypassing. Why does this happen? When you place a catheter in a male, Look at the balloon and the tip of the Foley catheter. This balloon and tip are lying over the trigone of urinary bladder. This trigone is the sensitive part of the urinary bladder. In fact, it's an antenna of the urinary bladder. It perceives all sensations. So this trigone starts getting stimulated by either the tip of a Foley catheter or the balloon. And then it suddenly starts contracting and when it starts contracting there will be some amount of urine by the side of the balloon see when we do, when we do these histograms or when we do uh, intravenous pylograms and we take a picture of a patient and there is a foley catheter in the bladder lumen you always see some amount of contrast by the side of the balloon and you can see in the picture here that the tip of the foley catheter is higher Naturally, the eye is there close to the tip and uh, the urine will remain all around the balloon and not drain into the eye. Look at this ultrasound picture. The patient has a Foley catheter and the tip is so long. In some catheters, the tip is very long and the eye therefore is far high up in the bladder which leads to accumulation of urine in the peri-balloon space. So, when you have a patient of full bladder like this one in a state of urinary tension, either acute or chronic and then you put catheter, all the urine above the eye will drain first and then you know bladder drains by abdominal pressure so the dome and the posterior wall will come into the lumen so more urine may drain into the catheter but even after that there is some urine by the side of the balloon and when this polycatheter balloon irritates the trigone, the muscle undergoes in a state of spasm like this and this spasm will push the urine in peri-balloon space not into the eye of the catheter but by the side of the catheter into the urethra and then into the urethra through the urethra out to the exterior from the urinary meters and that is what patient sees as leaking. So there are intermittent attacks of bladder spasms associated with suprapubic pain and urinary leakage. 
what you should do should you do logic says that if you have a balloon like this and if you can make balloon smaller like this then amount of urine around the balloon will become lesser or even small less so the amount of urine will become lesser lesser the volume in the balloon lesser will be the volume of urine around the balloon and lesser will become the leakage by the side of the catheter but remember don't deflate the balloon to a degree that it becomes unstable and it can come out so i think in a male 7 to 8 ml of fluid in the balloon is fine the other measures that you can take to uh, sort of uh, reduce the frequency and severity of these spasms is give the patient some medication and this is anticholinergic like trospium chloride like solifenacin darifenacin or toldirudine you can pick up any of these and give to the patient patient may have become better you can use antispasmodics like hyoscine or you can even use flavoxate so you can use any of these medicines or the combination of these medicines a patient is not okay still uh, people have tried putting in jalucan gel by the side of the catheter this minimizes urethral irritation to a degree that the leak becomes lesser and to my mind what works the best is the counseling and the counseling should be done prior to the placement of catheter you tell the patient that this is a catheter is a foreign body in the urinary tract whenever you put foreign body anywhere in the body the body gets slightly irritated there is a sensation of foreign body so your bladder will not like this and uh, therefore there will be some irritation you have to bear with it and this gets all right in everybody after some time and so would it happen to you so just bear with whatever happens to you after the catheterization so you spend time in telling the patient about this aspect and secondly immediately after putting in the catheter when urine is draining out keep talking to the patient and tell that he will have a foreign body sensation and some urine will leak by side of the catheter so if you talk to the patient about these things before and after putting catheter the the quantum of the problem is lessened you must also remember that the constipation worsens the problem and this is because when patient sits in on the pot and tries to strain to defecate the abdominal pressure will push the posterior wall of bladder against the foley balloon so in a way trigonus is being rubbed onto the balloon tip balloon or foley catheter tip so then spasms will happen and many patients say that at the time of defecation they notice a peculiar pain on the tip of the urethra and some urine often mixed with blood leaks by the side of catheter so you tell the patient to avoid constipation not strain during defecation take plenty of green vegetables laxatives while they are on catheter the second problem which is a serious problem is hematuria and the hematuria can be of this degree you put in a catheter whole urobag tubing and whole bag gets full of blood mixed urine sometimes it is just the blood and the blood clots now this happens when you put a catheter and you you are watching the patient urine is coming and then you move out of the site and you ask somebody else to take care and you go somewhere else and in the meantime the urine is flowing out of the bladder and then it starts becoming hemorrhagic since you are not around you don't notice it and becomes more hemorrhagic in next few minutes and sometimes even frank blood coming out so friends it is necessary that when you put catheter in any male you be around there yourself for at least 5 10 minutes or have somebody who is very vigilant on noticing what is happening to the urine so that you can pick this problem as soon as it starts happening this is called decompression hematuria now let me try and explain to you why does this happen and once you understand why does this happen you would know automatically how to prevent this from happening in the urinary bladder we have fine capillaries in the mucosa and in the submucosal plane when bladder is stressed the 
the fine vessels which are in the mucosal lining here this are this is the arrangement you know from the arteriole to a fine vessel and then to the venule now when bladder is put to stretch these vessels become compressed and they get thin walled there you look at full bladder the vessels are put to stretch because of the pressure of urine inside and that's what happens the vessels become thin and the resistance of blood flowing to the vessel is increasing okay and that's what is happening now as soon as you put the catheter in the bladder and you allow bladder to decompress rapidly what will then happen is that the blood will gush with speed into these vessels and these vessels are very thin walled and they cannot withstand high intraluminal pressure and the rupture and as the rupture depending upon the speed of blood loss you can have the the uh, clots forming in the lumen of the urinary bladder sometimes and there is a blood and the, of course frank hematuria are taking place in these patients so essentially a sudden decrease in the pressure of the bladder lumen leads to rupture of fine blood vessels and the hematuria takes place so it is the suddenness of bladder deflation which creates sudden change in the pressure gradient so then on that basis of pathogenesis how would you manage this so management wise if it is mild then the urine will be you know light pinkish or slightly reddish in this situation you ask the patient to take plenty of liquids be lying supine so that the bladder congestion is lesser and take plenty of liquids orally should be okay in those patients where hematuria is increasing or still becoming more then you must have the patient in hospital record vitals both pulse and blood pressure because you can have hemodynamic instability uh, in these patients so you have to be on the vigil in those patients where it is really severe you have to definitely be more active uh, you have to put intravenous line maybe give intravenous hemostatics like tranexamic acid injection and then you know this is the kind of hematuria i'm talking about frank blood fresh blood coming in the urobacterium and there can be clots blocking this catheter there can be clots in the bladder and if there fresh clots like forms just in front of you 3 minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes then you can use this tumi syringe connected to the catheter and push in saline and aspirate out the clots will be flushed out it is easy to flush out recently formed clots because they are soft clots right like you can use aseptic syringe also but to me is i think it will better and this process of bladder lavage to remove the clots should be continued four five times till you are able to clear all blood clots and the return in the syringe becomes water clear but if you feel that by pushing in syringe and trying to aspirate out clots are not coming clots will become big clots will become organized you are finding it difficult you are actually increasing the patient agony by distending the bladder so it's a high time that you send this patient to a urology consultant or a resident who will be doing endoscopy a cystoscopy of this patient and then in the operation theater suit wash away this clot through the sheath and that is how what will happen we connect an ileic evacuator to a rigid sheath in the urethra and push in some fluid and suck out these clots uh, by using this method this is called clot evacuation so clot evacuation is required only in certain specific situations key thing to ponder upon here is that can you do something beforehand to prevent this from happening first of all you must know which is the high risk group of patients who can have this decompression hematuria those patients who are on aspirin or those patients who have come to you with uh, what is called chronic urinary retention and when you palpate their bladders they feel very thick walled and very like a uterus thick thick bladder this is called high pressure tonic retention 
This means that the pressure of urine in the bladder is really high. When you deflate these bladders suddenly, hematuria is very severe. And those patients who are having pre-existing cystitis of some degree, they are more vulnerable to decompression hematuria. Now, in these patients, if you are trying to put or you are planning to put a 16 or an 18 French catheter, I would suggest that you put a 14 French catheter here. Because if you have a thinner catheter, the speed of flow of urine through thinner catheter is obviously lesser. So the pressure gradient change will be not so severe. What you can also do is position the bag at proper location. Now, if you position the bag like this one, the shown here, the bag is much lower than the abdomen of the patient, then urine starts draining from catheter into bag tubing then into bag and the continuous flow goes on and a kind of siphonage starts into play and the siphonage leads to more rapid de decompression. So don't allow this siphon action to take place. What you should do? Better is to place this urobag tubing on the thigh of the patient or on the lower abdomen of the patient for some time, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Also what you can do, you can ask some of your assistant to clamp the catheter by a hemostat or by some kind of a occlusive device. Clamp the catheter tubing for a while, open for a while. Clamp for a while, open for a while. So maybe 30 seconds open, 30 seconds clamp. By doing this, you can also then reduce the speed of decompression and minimize hematuria. The third problem that you can have is pericatheteric bleeding. And this bleeding can be, you know, sometimes mild. You can see some drops of blood mixed with jelly coming by the side of the catheter. You can tell the patient not to get alarmed, clean this and they'll be fine. But some patients can really have brisk bleeding happening. And this depends upon their, you know, coagulation profile. So, what you should do, clean this blood here, apply some antibiotic clean and put a small little gauge piece so that whatever blood uh, comes out is uh, taken away by the gauge piece and it is localized there only and not staining patients under garments. Put the patient to bed rest, this will settle. The other issue is, which is another serious issue, is that patients sometimes start developing fever with dry goods, a lot of shaking. And this is extremely bothering to the patient and the relatives really get very alarmed. So here, remember that you should give parental antibiotics to everybody at a time of catheterization. In those patients where you think some possibility of uh, this uh, episode of fever is higher, select a good antibiotic. And then you should be more careful in those patients who are diabetics. So it is better that you check blood sugar levels prior or at that time around and then be careful. You should also know which is the high risk group for getting this fever. And this is those who are already having some kind of a pre-existing urinary tract infection like patients with neurogenic bladder, like patients of a, a large volume post void residual urinary volume because of prostate or because of something in the urethra. Those were immunocompromised like HIV patients, advanced malignancies and uh, sort of a tuberculosis patients and you know what I am talking about. Or there is some breach in the asepsis while putting in a catheter. Unknowingly that has happened. And in that category of patients you should be more careful. So thank you very much for your patient listening and uh, sharing with me some of the problems that happen immediately after placing catheter. Thanks very much.